I, I tend to scream sometimes now that I have a microphone, so I will redo it. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, everybody. Today I have an amazing topic for you, which is kind of by you again. Yes, I outsource actually my video content and just let you guys work and it works amazing. I'm just kidding, I also had to work a bit. One of the questions I get the most from subscribers or people in my DMs, whatever, is the one about personal style and how to find it, how to know a certain item, especially if it's an investment, is the perfect style. I know how the route goes to find the perfect style. I hope in some sense you feel, feel like I have a clue about that. But I also asked in my stories because I was really wondering like, okay, what is the opinion of people of what is the perfect way to find personal style and personal taste and what is the route to achieve this nirvana? So I asked you in my stories, I received, I say 200 answers, I have not counted. To me, visually the amount looked like it could have been 200 people, can also be 50, but since this is an academic research channel, I say 200. So at the end, I got so many answers. I was really surprised, to be honest, because I thought, okay, a lot of people are not in the mood to tell me their life story, but surprise, a lot of people were in the mood to tell me their life story, which was amazing and what I love. And my heart goes bigger when people tell me about their life and especially when it's kind of fashion related. You know, if you can always include into your childhood trauma some fashion, it's always more exciting to listen, just FYI. Honestly, I was even thinking of creating something like an Excel to see which answers are the most similar or if there is a certain dynamic. But honestly, that's this is a chaos channel. It's not academical. This is complete chaos and we love it this way. So I took the ones that were the most common among those and created those rules. We're talking about the four rules to find your personal style, what you have to do to achieve that goal. And before I continue to get into the topic, you know what I will force you to uh, if you like this content, only then I can force you, unfortunately. Um, you don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also like. I do believe YouTube cares about likes, so you like or leave a comment. Let me know what is your essential rule also in the comments to find your personal taste. I think that's a very significant question in understanding people's tastes. So uh, let me know in the comments about that. You can also participate and join the Discord chat. The server is growing and booming and it's my happy place on where you can find so many people sharing the same thoughts as you have we have great discussions we have meetups we're also meeting in real life so it's the most beautiful thing in the world i think to create something like a community and participate and, and live something like a community especially if you are lacking fashion forward people uh, if you live in a suburb or in a small town like i did and your parents just think you are um, speaking nonsense and devilish talks. But now let's go. I have a little introduction for you guys. So a bunch of neuroscientists published a paper in 2018 called Cognition and Emotion. And it was handling the topic that there are two types of emotion differentiations, positive and negative. They tested if knowledge of arts and curiosity are associated with more fine-grained positive or negative aesthetic experiences. They found out that people with positive emotional differentiation were some sort of subtract of curiosity which reflect a form of enjoyment and engagement of, for novelty and complexity while being unrelated to artistic knowledge and perceived comprehension. Negative emotional differentiation was connected to an even higher form of curiosity, which means in this case that a deeper engagement with art is associated with more fine-grained emotional experience. This finding suggests that more nuanced emotional experiences are more likely to expertise in the arts and motivation for exploration. Today we are trying to understand how we can turn our focus more towards ourselves so we understand our personal style and how we can achieve the realization of this personal style. This experiment of these neuroscientists also shows that having a certain amount of knowledge impacts also your emotional experience with what you experience, which 
also has an effect on finding your style at the end. This study was concerning experiencing art, but I think fashion is very closely related as it is some sort of art as well. So that's just a very interesting information if you look at our rules. And I think we can start with number one right now. And I know you will hate me for having such a basic title, but I just wanted to make it easy. Know yourself. And I know exactly what you're thinking. You're like, Tuba, thank you, Pops. Um, this is revolutionary. Knowing it myself is something I never heard before. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Guys, people go overseas, stay somewhere for months and talk with the stars to try to get a glimpse of what they actually are. It's pretty hard to get that deep when you're looking at your phone while watching a movie, while listening to a song on your speakers, while trying to have a single senseful thought in your brain that has an attention span of probably like two seconds. Honestly, right now, I think my attention span is below three seconds. To be very honest, I think my grandpa, I'm 100% sure he was way better and keeping an attention for something. So knowing yourself is already suffering, like executing this, knowing yourself, we're already suffering under it because we don't take the time to do it because we're so distracted of knowing other people. But what exactly is the distraction? You know, like I have social media, I have a lot of channels, I have a lot of platforms. I, I only follow people that create fashion, work in fashion or have a say about fashion. So it actually is pretty okay to understand myself better maybe, to educate myself also. But that's not the only thing you do. And I'm sure it's also the same for you. I guess one thing we also always do while doing that is comparing ourselves instead of thinking of ourselves alone. We need a bench. I mean, it's, it's, it's human. It's pretty natural that we try to compare things to see what's better. We do that every day. We do that with products. We do that with items. We do that with food. We do that with TV shows. Why shouldn't we do that with ourselves? Look how I perform, look how this person performs, look how that person looks like, look how, like, how I look like. Um, the thing is just like you're not a product and you have something like emotions. And the moment you start comparing yourself, there's actually no way out of this. Like even if you think like you checked way more criteria than another person you're comparing yourself to, doing that by itself is actually pretty toxic and not helping you to get to know yourself better because you're trying to compete again with something that is not helping you on your own path. If you're following the path of a different person, you're on their path. You're not on your own and you're not trying to understand yourself better. You're trying to compete with that person. And the moment you start to compare yourself with that person, you're distracting yourself from your own work where you can put essential power in. Uh, and instead you put that power in something passive that doesn't help you in your life at all and especially doesn't improve your style. All these things in your daily life distract you from understanding yourself while being busy questioning why you are not a certain way. Think about what truly makes you happy, what used to make you happy in your childhood. Usually the essence of what we find aesthetically pleasing doesn't change too much. Trying to fit in, wearing generic things only leads to you blending in. It expresses that you don't want to be seen, that you don't have an opinion or you don't want to have an opinion seen. It's absolutely okay to have an interest in generic items as well. You can also identify with very mainstream generic stylistic features uh, because you say um, I have very deep thoughts just because I do not like to express these thoughts in terms of styling it doesn't mean that I cannot reach out to like very basic things you of course can do that that's a choice but even this means you know yourself and you thought about it and this is an interesting point we will talk about in rule three but first and foremost you need to do that very uncomfortable walk in the very depths of yourself where you find dreams and fears. These are the two things that are forming the you that is in the moment right now. I hope it doesn't sound too esoteric, but that's kind of your driving energies in life. It's the dreams, something you aspire to have, and it's the fears that are keeping you away from it. So once you're aware what your dream is and what your fears are, you also understand yourself better. So once you understood what your dream is and what you aspire to be, without any fears, if there are no fears, if you can do whatever you like, if there's no one watching, if you're alone on an island and you can decide what you dress like and you have found that person, we go to rule number two. And rule number two is called know the rules. Lee often said that you had to learn the rules to break them. 
In designing and creating garments, you need to learn and research on construction and techniques before you can produce something truly modern, contemporary and innovative. Knowing the past is probably key to building the present and future. This is what Sarah Burton said in Days and Confused magazine in November 2013. So once we shredded everything out and we came to our very raw form of dream that we have in rule number one, so we found ourselves, we know what we want actually, but we have no idea how to reach it. We come to rule number two, which is you need to be aware of some rules that exist in fashion. And I know we all love to say break the rules, but to break the rules, you need to know the rules. So as free as creativity is, there are always some rules you should have on your mind all the time. My favorite is check the tag. Always check the tag and check the stitches. It's not very complex to learn that and there are a lot of easy ways to get that knowledge as well. Knowing the country of origin and the composition of the materials is one of the most important factors in obtaining a quality in a garment. If you look at Cristobal Balenciaga, you see that he was a master of haute couture and that's exactly why he was able to break the well-known rituals of aesthetics as well. You shouldn't become a designer, but you should have a rough overview of designers, what they stand for, what ideology and forms they stand for as well. You have, for example, realized that avant-garde doesn't reflect you. It's too much for you. You don't want to go so much in depth when it comes to your style. You don't want to be so expressive. You want to keep it for yourself a bit more. So maybe you just don't want to express a deeper look into history and emotions with your clothes and maybe you choose Prada instead with the same depth but a more theatrical normality that in this case fits to your personality perfectly. Or you realize you're an eternally youthful person, for example. With a tendency to be a bit of a rebel, you decide to wear Martin Rose or Ralph Simmons. But you can only follow the stylistic guidelines of these designers if you are aware of them. So when I say know the rules, I also mean know the designers. You need to be aware of the 50 most important designers of this century at least to be aware what exists and it makes it so much easier because once you find designers that reflect your personality you can also kind of align with them even though I'm not a big fan to take just one single designer and make a hero out of him because that also means that you essentially do not focus on the design by itself anymore and the person behind it and no matter how much I love designers and brands I never look at the designer's persona, I look at the designs. But of course it's nice if she's a feminist in the 60s and has fought for women's rights. Mucha, my girl, you know what I mean. So to know the rules means being aware of production, being aware of quality and being aware of design. These three things you need to get this knowledge from somewhere and there's so much online. I've just been to a museum store a few days ago as well. Uh, they have usually a great selection of fashion as well. The books are not very cheap, but I know that you can also buy for way cheaper the PDF versions. I don't know if that's legal though. I think it's legal. But there was one thing that was called Textilepedia. I went nuts. It's amazing. Everything is written in it. Every form of composition of wool. You know how we call everything wool, wool blend and boiled wool, felted wool or something? Yeah, there were like 500 words for different wool compositions. And I don't say turn into a shepherd and, and gain that knowledge of, of wool fabrics, but it's amazing to just understand what you're buying at the end. For example, mohair is not mohair, angora is not angora, wool is not wool. and what can we do with cotton actually? Why is cotton shiny like silk sometimes? And why is silk sometimes looking like, more like wool and not like silk and is not shining? All these things are, are things that you need to gain to, to include all these criteria in your decision making to finally purchase a piece. So you should also have an eye on what the origin of the piece is. If you're living in Europe like me, uh, I would definitely suggest you only buy European items that don't come from overseas. Uh, it has nothing to do with the quality of uh, countries like China. They uh, create amazing quality as well. But it's just the fact that it has a huge footprint 
and we actually don't need that. Even ordering from online shops overseas, I know we all look at essence from here, but it doesn't make a lot of sense when we have so many online shops in Europe. So caring about the origin is important. Of course, also the production um, circumstances, if we have the chance to find that out, we should push that way more. The fabrics, but also of course the weight is soon. Um, I, for example, didn't have an eye at all at glued items, hand-stitched items, machine-stitched items. And I have people around me that have amazing knowledge concerning that and I'm shocked how many huge design houses sell you glued shoes for very high prices. Uh, and even though I adore these brands and their designs, this makes me question, for example, the decision if it's worth to really invest in this piece. And that's why it's so important that you know and realize when you see a piece and understand and have the knowledge that you have the power to question something and that you don't only receive a product on a tablet and are like, okay, now I know who I am, I know what I like, I'm going to buy this, but that you're also in the powerful position to question the item that you like visually. So when it comes to designers, I can only recommend you, if you care about the last 60 years or something, Christopher Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen, uh, Magella, are there more important people to me? No, of course. A Prada, these are the ones that are interesting to me and, and these are designers where you find tons of knowledge also in amazing magazines, uh, a lot of old interviews sometimes as well. I also watch a lot of YouTube of like old interviews with designers. I love watching the ones with Dries van Oten, for example. Like, it's amazing what kind of knowledge you can gain. Uh, lately, I've been watching a lot of Galliano, for example, of course. But there's also something, for example, like Style Tesauros that I saw in the museum bookstore. They, it was a bit like a subculture book, but everything was explained and, and uh, images were shown and it was really being explained, like, what is a dandy, for example? Like, that's something very old school, but... Um, I think they didn't have like these new TikTok trend names that we have, but more like the long lasting big trend and style influences. But there are many books. And as I said, you can get them online as well for a bit cheaper. So you need to know the rules of how it goes. And another book that I loved, for example, was one for suing, but it's boring as hell to me. But what I need to learn more are the very specific terms to describe certain design features of the shoulder, for example. There was just, there were two images of just shoulder styles and I think there were like 50 different words to describe how it can look. And yes, probably you're going to live your life with the three or four shoulder shapes you have already. Maybe you're adding some oversized shoulders, I don't know. But it's great to know and it's great to know, okay, this is a direction I don't want to go, oh, hey, there is something. I can try to find pieces that go into that direction if you don't know it exists, you cannot like it. You cannot dislike it. So you need to be aware of it. And when I say know the rules, that's what I mean. You need to have a bit of knowledge. So once we ticked rule number one and rule number two, which means we absolutely know who we are, we know we want to be here in 10 years and we know exactly what our fears are and who's holding us back. We gained some knowledge, we read a few books, we, we read some essays and a lot of magazines, which are actually for me the my favorite form of gaining information because it's a bit more contemporary and usually it's a form of a discussion because it's always like a designer in a certain context, but it's not about that. So you gained knowledge, you gained knowledge about yourself, and now we're coming to the operational part. Rule number three, experiment. So now you're all alone in a room with yourself and it's one-to-one, -one, it's a duel and you're looking into the mirror and you need to try on the things that you learned in the books that you like so much. So you need to try on pieces. You need to try on a lot of things until you understand what suits you. And I know nobody wants to say that there is something where we can generally objectively say this suits to a person more and this less. Everybody knows that this exists, but of course there are certain norms that restrict us to certain aesthetics that we don't want to support. So it's of course beautiful to embrace yourself the way you want to, no matter how it suits you. Because this word suits, is, it's a bit negatively loaded and I don't want to use it too much actually. But you still need to figure out how you feel also comfortable when something looks on you. For example, if you were wearing, not skinny, I mean nobody wears skinny jeans anymore, I hope. Uh, but even straight leg jeans and maybe you can force yourself to dry baggy jeans 
and then you wear baggy jeans and then you're like oh no straight jeans actually look better on me so you might have to learn that super wide shoulders look actually amazing on you this is something you cannot learn in the books you might have to learn that white pants actually look good on you you might have to learn that super tight shirts look good on you you might have to learn that bulky big, big shoes look better on you than slender ones so you need to experiment a lot and um, you can go to stores and try on everything you like. Of course, if it's, it's a bit sad if you like something and you don't buy it at the end, but it's very important to understand which silhouette you go for. If I have to give an example of myself, I think there are only two silhouettes I go for. And I know immediately when I see a piece, you know, it's also giving you so much more time when you choose pieces. I can go into a store with 500 pieces. I don't have to touch anything. I know already what is my silhouette and what not, no matter how beautiful the, the pieces are. The silhouette, the form is the most important thing. And as Martin Majala said, the shoulder and the heel size or the, your shoe is the most important thing about your look. It is what defines the silhouette, what defines your attitude, your position. So sometimes I even think of this quote when I want to wear sneakers and, and I'm just like, Martin would want me to have a little heel now. Anyway, the thing is, you need to experiment, you need to try the things, you need to try colors. I'm trying to implement color in my wardrobe now as well, but I know I can only do it in muted ways. And I will never, as much as I aesthetically love striking colors, like a striking red is beautiful, I will never wear it because I will not feel comfortable in it. And uh, the reason why I don't feel comfortable in it is probably because it doesn't reflect my personality. If you're over the stage of questioning yourself, you will naturally find things uncomfortable if they don't fit with your personality. If you don't know who you are yet, you're questioning yourself all the time. Why do I not like this trend? You might participate in trends where you feel ridiculous in. It's because you don't know yet who you are. So back to rule number one. You cannot participate in different trends or you will do it even more even maybe because you are that lost trying to find yourself and then you're just a sheep in the masses that is very unhappy and very poor probably from buying all the stuff to participate in trends. So once you work with a lot of different silhouettes, you might also kind of realize then with what silhouette you feel the most comfortable if you like to create an illusion around your body and go maybe a bit more avant-garde no, or not even avant-garde but more minimalist and that's why you want to distract from your natural physical silhouette. Or you like it if there's a contrast and your waist is tighter but then the pants are huge and their shoulders are wide so it looks completely different or you like it completely tight you need to test these things and try these things so order a bunch of pieces not too many not too much think of your footprint go to a store try on things and you will know exactly what you feel comfortable in. Believe me, if you are aware of designers and certain designs, and if the moment you start recognizing these things when they're up in the shelf somewhere, it will be enlightening. It will be enlightening and you will know what you like. Coming to rule number four, the hardest one for me personally. I think that's probably the thing where I am right now. I would say we can also call it stages. I'm in stage four right now, which is be patient. So once you figured out all these things, like you know who you are, you have knowledge, you know what you like, you are dressed in things and you know what you look good in, and then you want to buy these things. So that's a critical point. Because if you care a lot about designers and fashion, you might have realized it is also a form of art that sometimes also has the price tag of an art piece. And this is sometimes a bit contrary to your monthly salary maybe, and also not so healthy to participate in everything that you love and adore. You will also realize that once you hop on the fashion train, on the good one, not the trend one, but on the I'm digging deep now and I'm going deeper into the earth core. You know that one, not the one that is, not the Disneyland one where, where all the TikTok trends are, not that one, I mean the core one, where you want to build up a full understanding of fashion in the form of art. It comes with a high price tag. And it also still we receive every six months, every three months, new collections, which means new pieces every time. 50 new pieces, 60 new pieces. Some are more impactful, some are less, some we don't even recognize, but there are definitely too many that we recognize and like. And that's the moment where you need to start to be patient and observe. 
you need to observe pieces, you need to observe yourself watching the pieces come and go, how you feel. Personally, I experience very often that I go nuts for something, that I want to pre-order something. And two months after it's being launched, I just figure I don't need it. I don't even crave it, but I would have bought it two months ago. So waiting is something that is very essential when you want to build your own style as well, because it keeps you also from purchasing the wrong items. Sometimes you're distracted, you're looted, you don't know what you like immediately and you're kind of also a bit influenced from the beautiful ID magazine editorials where you saw the pieces in. That's why I can say create wish lists. Wish lists are the thing that save my life. I have wish lists, I have wish lists on Essence, on Vestia Collective, on the Real Wheel, on every website that I find quite interesting when it comes to their curation. I have actually a wish list and I just observe. I tend I never buy things on retail price. I actually always wait for them. Because I do have the time and since I don't purchase too many items and since I know my style, it's okay for me to wait for an amazing piece six months to go on sale and then I buy it for half price off. You don't have to have it immediately. If you want to, you can of course go for it. There are also pieces that I immediately bought. If you are also getting into fashion, the fun and the endorphins, everything is connected with actually kind of the hunt for a perfect piece. I love Vestia Collective for hunting sponsor me not. I did way too many ads for this website and they took way too much money from me. But you need to be a bit more reserved when it comes to making your decisions. As I said, second-hand luxury houses are amazing because you can make offers so you get things even for a better price. And it also gives you the time to reflect on your intention concerning a certain aesthetic. I need to push myself back right now for Mew Mew. I need to be very careful because I'm not a huge fan of everything but certain things I'm a huge huge fan of so I need to be very careful if this is just like my inner trend vibe that I try to follow or if it's really an essential piece for my aesthetic and will fit into my wardrobe because I do definitely not like uniform wardrobes I have a lot of different aesthetics for all my personality traits but there are certain personality traits that are reflected so I need certain pieces that fit in and the amazing thing is, even if you don't want it, the websites will stalk you, they will find you, and they will send you notification if something goes more on sale or less on sale or if it's gone. Uh, last week I had a little mental breakdown because you know that piece that you have been watching on Vestia Collective for two years, you would never have bought it, uh, it was too expensive, but then somebody buys it. Yeah, that was tough. It honestly took me like two days to get over it. But it's okay. I knew all along I was not going to buy it. But, you know, it's like letting an old friend go. It's actually pretty emotional. So being patient means you restrict yourself also for making impulsive decisions. And you also understand if there's maybe a lost chance of getting something, how you feel towards that. And believe me, 90% of the time you, you realize okay, I'm not crying about it right now. I actually have two other pieces that look very similar and doesn't make a lot of sense to have had bought that. So that's fine. So that's about it. These are my four rules that I think are necessary stages to find your true style at the end and stick to pieces that reflect your true self. But still, since I received so many amazing comments from you guys, I want to name some of those, which I think is amazing you really had some very insightful thoughts very short and quirky but i will mention them right now learn the rules to break the rules don't turn into a costume start knowing yourself use what you like not what others like tailor your clothes know your colors good things are worth the wait read the labels materials country of origin the allergy to boredom is the best power wheel. Think of your hero when you were a child. Start looking inward for inspiration. Experiment with weird clothes. Appreciate things from afar. Not everything needs to be owned. Create mood boards. Uh, I'm not a mood board fan. Imagine your... Rick Owens as well not. Imagine your life as a job. Oh, this I love. This one I love. Imagine your life as a job and you need to create a uniform for it. What would it be? I loved this answer. Imagine 
your life is a job and you need to create a uniform for that job, what would it be? What what is yours? It's so hard because it's a uniform, so I don't I still don't want to be too minimalistic even though the essential fundament of a uniform is being basic in some sort. I think mine would be a good wool pant and a tight tank top. Okay, sorry. It's super basic. Maybe okay, um a super eclectic shoes like Dries van Noten or Prada. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's good. And then a uh, long thin coat and then big earrings yeah okay that's my that's my uniform what is yours stop dressing to impress men and feed the male gaze absolutely true i think this could be another video feeding the male gaze or the is there a female gaze is there is there a female gaze as well probably right don't be too literal build a juxtaposition of course very essential like if you want to create an eclectic, but like in an interesting way and contrasting way, something you you need to break something in the look. So you can not go full monochrome, even though being full monochrome is a look in itself. It is not as interesting. It is a bit boring. Minimalism or like pure maximalism, like everything that is that is purely one aesthetic is a bit it works very well. It's not also not my personal taste. I like it when it's a bit mixed. Seek the dangerous. It's very funny because uh, Mucha Prada today is on the Vogue US cover, I think, and she says, I like to take risks. And the Seek the Dangerous right now reminded me of that. So it's very Mucha. And Seek the Dangerous, absolutely. Absolutely also you need to t make those decisions for pieces where you don't dare to do it and you need to get out of your comfort zone. It's very essential. Don't care about other people's opinions. Easier said than done. Um, I think I made it out of it, but if you're especially in a corporate environment or in just any job where you are being judged by your colleagues, um, it's hard to fight against that all alone. Either you just don't fight and you understand um, these people will never understand it. Uh, I know it can be hurtful. If you have the chance, try to be in a different environment if, if you have the possibility. I, I never was in such a toxic environment in my life, but I can imagine it's really not embracing the level of happiness in life. Forget about flattering. Um, honestly, yes, I say it. Of course, I find myself searching for then a flattering piece at the end maybe as well. But yes, uh, forget about flattering. Definitely essential to experiment with new forms and silhouettes. Trust your intuition, 100%. Trust your intuition always. Always trust your intuition. It's the, I think that's rule number one, like before knowing yourself maybe even. like. Intuition is, guys, it's the thing to go. Don't ask other people for opinions. Never ask somebody, that's the worst thing you can do. Never ask somebody, does that suit me? Like, of course you can ask people to, what do you think about this? Because you're interested in people's opinions, but don't base your stylistic choice on other people's opinions. This, we don't do, we don't do that here. Before buying, asking myself, will this evolve my style? Interesting. Um, I think there are pieces that are essentials and that cannot really evolve your style but more like manifest your style and because it's a fundamental piece maybe. But of course if it's a big investment I also always wanted to kind of evolve my style because you can always do better and go into a new direction. Change is the most important thing in life. Change is the best thing. Like you always need to change to, to improve your style. With improve your style I don't mean owning the newest pieces. It's just you change every day and this needs to be reflected in your style and going for the same and same over and over again is some form of stagnation. Not settling for less, absolutely. Uh, this doesn't mean you should go to Lore Piana and say, hey, I cannot settle for less. I need the best cashmere in the world. Not that, but you can quit something such as fast fashion. I know everybody can do that. Everybody can do that. And I know from my Discord and everybody's doing an amazing job finding insane pieces thrifted uh, living in also not in big, big towns, so nobody tell me you had no choice. Don't get influenced, guys. Don't get influenced from your phones and people that you see. Don't do that. You, you will find, you will be cooler. It takes time. You will not get the recognition you want. You will not maybe have the likes you want. But it's always worth it to stick to your aesthetic. It will always pay off. Always. So. Don't forget to like this video to follow this amazing channel because right now you're enlightened and you found your twin flame with me as well. No, don't forget to subscribe if you like 
what I do here. Uh, I try to find a good balance between talking about fashion shows and personal style. Let me know how you think feel about that as well. I don't want this to turn into one only thing because I love to talk about personal style because at the very end of the day, all this fashion, all these fashion shows, everything is just meant to impact our personal style. It's just about us, which is the beautiful thing. And, but I also love runways and I love storytelling and I love design. So I'm going to talk about design as well. But I think sometimes it's, it might be a bit abstract and a bit harder to reflect that on one's personal life. That's why I want to do both of it. And I think it's kind of okay-ish right now. So let me know what you think about that. And don't forget to join the Discord. I can only recommend it, honestly. It's amazing. Uh, there's a London meetup end of this month. Uh, we have amazing people that are also organizing it. I will not participate in all of them, but maybe we do a Paris one. So join and talk about, we have all kinds of topics. We have amazing, I mean, it's my, it's my comfort place. Like I don't wear joggers. I just chill in my Discord. That's what I do. So if you like this, um, let me know. Leave a little heart like this uh, or thumbs up.